Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. Hope you're doing well, staying safe, taking care of yourselves out there. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. It's great to meet you. I make tutorial videos here every week where I show you how I edit my photos using various software products. Today I'm in Luminar 4 and I'm having a good time because I'm working on a sunrise photo from our trip to Iceland when I went earlier this year, back when we could travel and actually go places. Um, and we went on the Luminar photo camp. Let me show you the photo. Here it is, unedited. And this is Serge Romilly, great photographer. Uh, highly recommend that you follow him here on YouTube and other places, but he's a great photographer, great guy, and we, we got to hang out there and I got to know him a bit. But he posed there on top of this glacier after we'd finished shooting in an ice cave underneath it uh, when sunrise first hit. We got some great shots from there, but this was just after that. We climbed up on top and I got this shot. But um, as much as I love the photo, and I do love it quite a bit, there's some things I don't like about it. I want to pop the contrast a little bit. I want to give it a little bit little bit of kick in color. I don't want to overdo it. Even me, I don't want to overdo it, I promise. Um, and I want to manage some of the details. Like if you look at the snow, for example, like if you uh, come in down here, it's really crispy, right? I mean, it's, uh, it's, I mean it looks cool uh, that you have that much detail, but honestly, it kind of visually overwhelms me a little bit, so I'm going to work on that as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is start in Smart Contrast, and I'm going to like a 38 or so there. I'm going to pull the highlights down, about a 40, uh, and then I'm going to actually pull the whites up, and that's because I want to pop that snow a little bit, so I'm going to pull the whites up of about a 50, 52, something like that. Pretty basic stuff. Let me show you the before and after. There it is before and after, not a major difference. So, of course, I'm going to keep going, and part of this video, what it's about is how I'm managing the, the light, the detail, the color, the things I usually manage for this sunrise shot and how you don't have to make massive changes in any particular tool to end up with a fairly significantly different image. So I'm going to go AI accent of about 35 or 36 and I'm going to give a little bump to the sky as well. And there you go. Let me show you what this tool looked like before and after. There it is off and especially the sky. That sky enhancer really does a lot to create some contrast and depth in the sky. And of course, it does darken the sky. So if you look at the uh, before and the after, a bit more contrasty image. Some of that's coming from the AI accent, but also the sky, I think, looks better because of the sky enhancer, which I actually don't use a whole lot, but I really like it in this photo. Okay, now I'm going to AI structure, and this is part of what I'm talking about, about managing the details. I'm gonna do my typical trick and go kind of negative and kind of like negative 85 and I'm going to boost it like 35 or something like that. Um, and what I'm trying to do is, I showed you the close-up of the snow. I just don't really like it. It's too much for me. It's kind of visually overwhelming. So I'm going to get a gradient mask, and I'm just going to drag that gradient mask here into the snow, something about like that. Uh, yeah, something about like that. And all I'm trying to do is just create a mask that's going to affect just that piece of the image, that bottom slanted kind of third, let's call it, basically the snow, right? So I've done that. You can see what the mask looks like. And in fact, I'll just uh, highlight that here so you can see it more easily. That's what it looks like. I basically put negative structure with the boost onto the snow. Oops, I forgot something. While I'm at it, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to copy that mask because I'm going to use it again. I'm going to say copy and then I'm done. First thing I'm going to do, though, is go over to color and make a couple of adjustments to the image with the colors before I go use that mask in a moment. So first thing is vibrance, and I'm going to pull that up like a 22, 23. It gives an overall pop to some of the non-dominant colors. It really sets it up nicely, I think, but there's a couple of things I want to work on, of course. Uh, the first one is orange, and I want to come over here, and I'm going to give that a bump of about a 30 or so in saturation. Let me turn this off. There's before, and if you look at, especially around the sun and where it's glowing on the clouds and after, it's picked up a little bit more of that orange, which I really like, and I shot this as a bracket set right into the sun, you know. Um, so I've got a burned out section around the sun. Um, I'm just not going to recover that. And you know what? It's okay. I don't really care. Um, I'm not really trying for perfection. I like it like that. I've got nice sun rays that are natural. As you can see, I haven't used the sun rays filter here. Um, but uh, next, I want to go into the blue. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the saturation down just a little bit, like a 17. I don't want a too much blue. And especially in the snow, I don't want too much. And I'm going to take the luminance down a little bit. That also kind of darkens, uh, well, not kind of, it does darken the blue a little bit. So I've got to check my notes. It was about a 20, 21, something about like that. So let me show you what I did overall with color. 
There it is before and there it is after. A little vibrance globally and then within the specific colors, a bumped up saturation of orange and then for blue I took down saturation and also took down uh, luminance to darken it a little bit, creating a little bit of contrast, darker background, a little bit brighter foreground. Okay, and now we're on to Details Enhancer. And basically, I'm just softening all the details here, like roughly about a negative 40 or so, something about like that. I'm just gonna go with 40s. Um, there we go, I got them all at 40, and I'm gonna say Mask, and I'm gonna say Brush, and then I'm gonna come over here, and I'm gonna say Mask, Paste. Um, and basically what I've done, if you wanna look, is I've got that same mask from AI Structure. I copied it from there. I did another tool, Color, next but because i didn't mess with the masking menu it still saved that copy mask and i put it in there um, here on details which are now negative negative. and again all i'm doing is reducing the detail visibility in that snow just trying to soften it up soften it up a little bit um, and i think it's working there's the before you can see a little bit more detail and after um, i think that looks better again trying to soften that up i just don't really like that uh, hard packed and really grainy looking snow and and the truth is it's a really really thin layer of snow and the rest of that is ice so uh, we had our crampons on and we were stepping really hard to get the ice you know the teeth to stick into the ice that sort of thing so um working out pretty well so far next i'm on to golden hour and here i'm going about 25 uh, and this is global of course when you first draw it but here's the thing I like it across the image, but I don't really like it so much in the snow. So I'm going to go do a different gradient mask here. And I like it all up in the sky and across that uh, kind of that river valley. But what I want to do is just take this gradient mask and just kind of fade it into that snow a little bit. Something about like that. I basically feel like the color in the snow is getting a little too far away from um, the color I want it to be. So golden hour i don't want too much golden hour dropping on top of the snow so i'm basically um you know keeping the golden hour in the rest of the photo so if you look at the before there it is without golden hour and after again a little bit of pop in the sky and a little bit of pop in that middle thirds and i'm fine okay just a couple of things left now i'm going to pop over to the pro tab and i'm going to start with color enhancer and i'm going to use color contrast basically you pick a hue and then you drag the amount to get the color contrast. And what it does is, let me just show you, if I do a really whole lot of this, what it does is it, it lightens the color of the hue that you chose and it darkens the opposite color. Well, I'm gonna leave it in red, but I'm not gonna go that high. I'm gonna go about 15. So it's lightening the reddish, which is gonna be the area around the sun, but it's darkening the opposite color, which is kind of the blue. So if you look at the blue, it's, it's easier if I drag it high. You can see the blue's gotten really darker and the orangey reds have gotten really bright. But again, I don't want to go that much. I'm just adding a tiny bit of color contrast. So if I turn that off just before and after, I just popped a little bit of brightness in that orange around the sun and a tiny bit of darkness in the blue. Again, fairly minor, but it's a nice little trick to add an extra little bit of pop to your image. Okay, and the last thing is split toning. And this is where I want to work on the color here in the snow. Um, it's taking on a little too much orangey pink for me, and I kind of want to go the other way. It's almost a little bit of a magenta color, and I want to go the other way. So I actually found that um, I'm going to go grab a hue of like 139, 140, which is kind of in the green. Sounds weird, I know. Um, and I go to a saturation level of about 19 or 20. Um, and look what it does to the snow. Now, I'm going to apply this with a gradient mask, uh, but there it is. Let me just turn that mask off. I've basically, let me hit done. There we go. I basically added a, um, a little bit of green, which is kind of the opposite of the magenta that was kind of hitting the snow, to pull that kind of sunnier, uh, orangey or kind of pinkish color out of the snow. I'm trying to get a little bit more white. And if I look, look at the before, it's kind of got that magenta cast to it. And after um, adding a little bit of green, and I'm actually going to pull that down, and then painting that in um, actually has pulled the color uh, slightly out of that, that pinkish color. And that's what I, I just didn't want too much pink on the snow. I wanted to try to keep it and get it looking a little bit white. And that was really what I did. So let me show you what, where we started and where we are. There's the before unedited photo, and there's the after. Quite different. Uh, quite a lot of variance in the photo. And as you saw, I didn't really do a lot of big things. You can kind of see the differences here. 
but the sky looks it's got a nice pop to it the colors are really popping i think i managed the detail nicely uh you know worked on the light a little bit as well and the contrast but those are some ideas and some things to work on in your own photos uh, and i see some spots there's a spot there i saw a spot over here in the sky and there's one over there in the left corner i'll go take that out this sun flare um I kind of like it to be honest you may be annoyed by it you could try the eraser or the clone and stamp to get that out but i'm going to leave it it's kind of like framing the subject in fact i kind of wish there was one on the left side but um it didn't happen anyway that's my workflow for this one my friends trying to give you some ideas some inspiration hope it helps and i hope you're doing well and staying safe and take care of yourselves and i'll see you really soon thanks for watching see you soon and adios